I have the coolest job in the world. What do I do? I go to work, I show up at the office, I sit down, I take a selfie, I go on Facebook, check my messages, check what's happening, and then from there I go on Twitter, Instagram. And so my, box, my boss walks in and then he looks at me and goes, great job. <laughs> right? So what do I do? I literally get paid to be on Facebook right? and Twitter all day per se. But on top of that, my job is really about social listening. Now, social listening is more about listening to different comments, queries, finding out what people are saying, following the different hashtags, and hearing what exactly is going on across the world or across various social media sites, per se. Now, just to give you some statistics, to give you some interesting facts with some uh, the leading social networks across the world, Facebook is currently the biggest one, followed by WhatsApp, as well as Facebook Messenger, with about 900 million followers, that is. Now, on average, or rather, we have about 7.1 billion people across the world, of which 2.1 billion of those are actually on some social site per se. And about 50% of people who are on Facebook actually go there more than once a day. Hands up if you've been on Facebook more than once a day. Okay, it's about 30, 40%. Okay. Okay. Now, there's about one, on, on a monthly basis, about 1.39 billion people that, are going, that go on Facebook. And about 800 million people that are on Facebook consistently every single day. About one billion of those consistently say, search about various things, search for friends, search for various other uh, interested business that you're in. And about two billion photos actually go on Facebook every single day. Now, how much influence does social media have on our lives? Now, hands up if you've ever been on a date and you felt like this person has taken more selfies, has actually spent more time on their social media than they have spent time talking to you. And in some situations, many of you have also in family situations where you spend a lot more time interacting on social media than it is actually interacting with your family. And for some of you, I know you've been on those vacations where it's not really about being on the vacation, it's more about showing people that, hey, I'm at the coast, look at me. <laughs> now, for some of you, social media has connected you to new friends. You know those awkward situations, or those situations where you start um, looking through somebody's profile and you end up on their cousins, uncles, wives, <laughs> pictures from 2010, and then you meet the person, you feel like you know them. <laughs> Hashtag stalker alert tendencies. <laughs> All right. However, social media has also brought about some very interesting or some rather serious advocacy that is. The Black Lives Matter movement, which is currently happening in the USA, being one of them, whereby people, um, where black people are actually advocating for uh, the right treatment, per se. And the Fees Must Fall movement, which is currently happening in SA as well, and has also spilled over to Namibia some time back. Now, have you ever found yourself in this situation when you ask yourself, who am I? And what am I doing here? And then you answered, well, I'm here because I'm here. <laughs> Simply meaning that you find yourself in a situation where you're not really sure why you're on this particular site. You're just there because you're there. And some of you, if you're a student, I'm pretty sure you can attest to this. It's 10 o'clock, you're studying for an exam, and then from there you get a notification and you start commenting. Next thing you know, it's 5 o'clock in the morning, you ask yourself, what am I doing here, man? I've got exams in the morning. And this is quite sad, but it's actually quite true. People nowadays would rather take a video of you being in trouble than actually helping you out. A few months back, I saw this one video where a guy was being chased by three guys. And so when they caught him, they shot him like a couple of times. What was interesting was that somebody had actually taken a video of this whole thing happening. And then they took the video and they posted it on social media. And there's a lot of comments about that. Which led me to this question. Is social media the root of all evil? And why do we need to control, alter, or delete the influence of social media in our lives? I realize that social media is a tool, right? It merely reveals and broadcasts who we are. For example, if I take my phone and I throw it towards you, and I hit you really bad, right? Does that make my phone evil? No. It simply means that the phone, 
the phone is being used and how I use it reveals my intention, which might be the ones that are evil. Now, this is what I realized, that the love of social media is the root of all evil. Now, this comes from the great book of First Tuli, chapter 4, verse 25. Thank you. I realized that we like, share, comment on things on social media, things that actually interest our souls. See, every like, everything that we like when you like a particular page displays our interest. If I go to TEDx Namibia and I like their page, it's because I'm interested in what they have to say. Or if I like a particular celebrity, it's because I'm interested in what they're saying, per se. And every comment reveals our thoughts. See, you don't comment out of somebody else's mind. You comment out of your own mind, out of your own perspective, your own theories. And as well, every share echoes our voices. Have you ever seen those memes that actually just kind of say that what you want to say? You don't really have words, but the moment you saw that, you're like, this is what I wanted to say. So every share that we do actually echoes our own voices. Now, evil in itself begins when you like, comment, and share on social media more than you share in real life. All right? And this is actually what begins to destroy the soul. Because you've got to realize that social media is a platform which does not necessarily have a soul. A few months back, or rather a few weeks back, I attended a friend's wedding. And so my friend is Namibian, and his wife is actually from Russia. So the, the wife couldn't have, couldn't have the family here. So what she did was that she was tweeting about it. She was taking photos, sending to the mom, you know, and she was trying to, uh, she was, she was um, taking photos and, and all these things, you know. And she was trying to connect the mom to, to, to the experience. And so at some point, um, you know, Namibians, we have a, when it comes to weddings, we have a culture of being very, we like to dance and show off and a lot of things. So at some point she was, she was on, 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 on Skype and she was showing the mom what was happening. She was trying to do all this. And I realized that she was trying to connect her mom to the experience. Although her mom is actually very far, she's trying to connect her mom to the experience. What was interesting was that while she was trying to connect her mom to the experience, she herself was missing out on the experience. This is what led me to this. Social media today is pretty great at connecting us to people across the world. Families, friends, people we know, people we don't know, uh, people with new ideas and stuff like that. But it's pretty lousy at actually connecting us to the people who are right next to us. The reality is this. Nothing can ever replace the power of the human touch. See, when you're going through a sad situation, I can send you a sad emoji or I'm sorry emoji. Or if I want to say I love you, I can send you all these little nice hard things and all those things. Or if you're going through a hard time, I can send you hugs and kisses. Unfortunately, nothing can ever replace me being there, actually giving you a hug or saying I'm sorry or just being there in that person's presence per se. So this is what I've learned. That every post, every comment, every share that we have says something about us. And so... Here's the question. How do we actually control, alter, or delete the influence of social media on our lives? Of which control means to, find, to determine alternative behaviors, alter means to find other possibilities or choices, and delete to simply remove this particular thing. And the answer is this, is by knowing who you are. See, when you know who you are, it's easy for you to determine everything. It's easy for you to determine what social networks or what social sites you're on, um, it's easy for you to determine as to how much time you should spend on social media. It's e easy for you to control all these other influences that come with social media per se. So why, what do your posts, comments, or shares say about you at the end of the day? See, it's interesting. When you post something, it says a lot about who you are. If I go on Facebook and I start sharing about how I hate all black people because well, for some unknown reason. It doesn't say much about the black people. It says a lot about who I am. It says a lot about why I hate or why I'm in this particular situation, to say. So having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Before I go, um, it will be totally wrong for me to do a talk on social media and not take a selfie. I'm sorry. <laughs> 
I really am not take a selfie while on stage. So please bear with me for a second while I take a selfie. Um, and if you're in the front row, please do smile. Yeah, for my selfie. Yes, let's just do that. Ah, yes, beautiful. <laughs> okay, let me take that one last time. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs>